Looks like we're alive. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another recreational programming session about that. But you so shit should open. So let's make a little bit of an announcement and uh, officially start the stream. So let me bring my uh, Discord server. Um, so in here, we're going to probably want to actually zoom in a little bit. Uh, Red Circle live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch? Let me find the title of today's stream. So today we are working on the compilation speed up of our programming language called Porth. That's what we're doing today. So I'm going to give the link to the uh, twitch.tv slash starting, right? And I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. And there we go. The stream has officially started. So um, today I was thinking about different stuff regarding our language. Today I was rather working on, on, on the language, right? Doing some not important things. And I noticed a very like a low hanging fruit for making the compilation a bit faster. And I decided that that would be actually a pretty good uh, topic for the stream, right? So uh, low hanging fruit, um, so also visible improvement. So why not stream that? I think, I think it's gonna be cool. So let's go to the source code and um, yeah, fetch the latest changes as usual. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you guys doing? Um, well, hello everyone in the chat. And Yesu, Yesu, Yesu. So what's the status? Uh, what's the branch? Uh, let's fetch the latest stuff. So let's fetch the latest changes because I've made some changes of screen and let's merge them. Merge origin master. Okay, cool. So let me recompile the compiler, right, to get the latest version of the compiler. Uh, right, and uh, let me do that again, just to recompile the compiler with the new version of the compiler. And there we go. So as you can see, we have sort of like three steps in the compilation, right? The compilation itself, uh, though I wouldn't say it's a compilation, it's basically taking the uh, source code, the text of the program, right? The text of the program and turning it into intermediate representation, right? Into a sequence of uh, instructions of this virtual port machine, uh, virtual abstract port machine. Uh, then we have type checking. So essentially we take the intermediate representation and we a check how types add up while you execute this uh, abstract machine. And then we generate the assembly code out of that sequence of instructions of an abstract port machine. Right. And as you can see, uh, so compilation and type checking are like sub one second, but the generation is actually way longer. And um, you can even feel that, right? So if you, if you run this entire thing, you will notice that it's hang out on generating quite a bit. Uh, but this timing is not particularly accurate because I also accidentally included uh, FASM into measurement of the generation. So this is something that we probably want to uh, actually separate, right? So we want to uh, separately measure how much uh, it takes for a program to generate text out of instructions and then uh, how much time it takes for assembler, for the backend assembler to turn that into the native instructions, right? So it's probably going to be the first thing that we're going to do. So, uh, all right, let me go to here and open this source code and just like correct everything. I think we've got a sub uh, right away. Thank you so much, Pawn Theory, uh, for eight months of uh, tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, with the message epic port speed. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to achieve today. We're going to achieve epic port speed. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be like a very significant speed up, but uh, it's going to be a speed up nonetheless. This is something that I wanted to do anyway for quite some time. So I thought maybe the time has come. Uh, all right, so let me see. Generate uh-huh so this is how we measure everything so this is where we stop measuring the generation of our nation okay uh, and let me find the time time it from here right I think this is where we start this is where we end uh, and this is where we start uh, so I think what we need to do is probably move that line Right, move that line somewhere here, somewhere up there, uh, right here. So also, I will probably need to re-indent everything in here because it's not, it's no longer behind the measurement block, so to speak. So let me quickly do that, and let me recompile the entire compiler. Right, so this is going to be something like 
uh, port uh, compile port dot port port dot port. So and on the next recompilation, we're gonna have a more reliable information on the generation. Okay, so this is how much generation takes. 1.7, excluding FASM. Right. So, all right. So it's still the longest, uh, the longest step, which is quite surprising, don't you think? Right, because what it, it doesn't even do anything that complicated. Certainly, the generation is way simpler than type checking. For the type checking, we have a persistent data structure that maintains several copies of the stacks that share the same sort of like uh, the same state and stuff like that. And there is like a memory management around type checking. So there's a lot of shit that happens within these 200 milliseconds, actually 300 milliseconds. And for some reason, generation takes two seconds. And what it does, it just iterates through the sequence of the instructions and just generates the text out of them. Surprisingly, it is slow for the same reason why um, my language was slower than C. <laughs> Do you guys remember that legendary video? Why uh, why my language is slower than C or something like that? I don't remember. Like, I think this is the most viewed video on my channel, uh, right? So if only YouTube loaded up a little bit faster, but this is because I'm also streaming. Um, it's loading daily. Why C is faster? Right, so let's actually, that should be enough, I think. Uh, right, why is C faster than my language? Right, so I really recommend to check out this video. It's actually a pretty cool video. Uh, and uh, essentially, the reason why it was faster is because C uh, input output has buffering, which reduces the amount of time you perform a write C call. Right. So, and essentially, we have no buffering as well, and that's because uh, that's why it is so slow. So, what I decided to do today, why not just like slap some buffering uh, on top of the generation and see how quick, how much we can speed speed up the generation part? Because what we're doing in here, we're just generating a bunch of text without doing anything complicated. Certainly, it's way simpler than type checking, as I already mentioned. So, we should see quite a quite a speed up i think so i'm gonna leave the uh link to the video in the description uh where is my description so i'm gonna put it in here uh so why c is faster faster than my language there we go mm -hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, so we've got another sub. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Poopy, for 10 months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic Porth Club. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I've got my team and I'm ready to go. So maybe it would make sense to also measure how uh, much time it takes for FASM to generate assembly. So I think it would be kind of interesting. So let's do something like time it from uh, here, right? And here we actually run the FASM and we might as well include things like renaming the file and also uh, changing, its, um, changing its permission and stuff like that. So I'm gonna put this thing in here. Uh, so generation took that stuff, uh, FASM, uh, I think that should be enough. Mm, time it like that and let's recompile into I think mm -mm. so if I do that one more time so we have different uh, stages in here so FASM takes it's kind of interesting that uh, it takes for a FASM to take our generated source code and produce native elf executable takes less time than for us to do type checking which is kind of cool, right? But FASM is handwritten in assembly. So for those who doesn't know, FASM is a com is assembler that is written in itself. It's also self-hosted. Uh, so if you're really interested to learn about that, so I recommend to check out the source code of FASM. It's actually quite fascinating. Uh, I don't know if I already mentioned that, but uh, it is very, very cool uh, assembler. Uh, and there is a very active community behind that assembler that actually implements a lot of things purely in assembler. Uh, so I'm going to uh, give the link in, in here. So and also for people who's watching on YouTube, I'm going to put it in the description. Fasm source code. So and the entire assembler is written in itself. Uh, believe it or not, it's written in itself. And here's the source code. Uh, what's funny is that like all of the files here are capitalized. And this is because the original version of the compiler was written in DOS, I believe. 
And that's how you sort of like name files in DOS. So you may take a look at the history. So the history of this entire thing was at some point sort of reconstructed. And I think the first release was in 1999. Right. It was in 1999, like 24 years ago, uh, roughly. It is very fascinating assembler and it still works and it's still maintained. So the last release was when? It was last month, essentially. Yeah, the last release was last month. And the first release was 24 years ago. Um, so, <laughs> so let me take a look. I'm going to actually uh, clone it. Uh, maybe at some point I'm going to make a stream where I look into this assembler because it's hella fascinating telling you. Um, so if I take a look at the history of this entire thing. So this is basically a reconstructed history. I wonder if I can do something like, yeah, okay, 23 years ago, right? So the first release was 23 years ago. And uh, there's also reconstructed dates, 1999, uh, May 4th, though. Right, so that's actually quite interesting. And uh, yeah, so the first version was actually 5,000 lines of assembly itself. It's actually pretty cool. All right, anyway, so we'll get back to, to the developments. I just wanted to, to mention all that. Um, so let me go to port.port and let's find a function that is responsible for generating the assembler. Uh, generate, so this is the code generator. Uh, generate op comment maybe it's going to be the next one generate op intel right so this is a single instruction uh, and here we go so we have a function generate fuzzum linux so we have a file path actually the output file path right so it will take the global array of instructions right so we have a global array of instructions and it will generate assembly uh, out of them into that specific file so what we're doing here, we're opening the file, uh, right, using uh, open at uh, syscall of Linux, right, and we just directly write into it, right, just directly write into it. So, and we, if we want to have a buffering, instead of directly writing into that file, we first need to write into some sort of a buffer, right. Uh, and then when that buffer is flashed, only then we should actually perform the actual syscall and uh, write everything we have in the buffer into like, like send everything we have in the buffer to the operating system and the operating system will make all of the necessary things to make this text appear on the screen or in a file or somewhere else. That's why we have operating system, uh, which abstracts us from like specific places where we print things. Does that make any sense? That's why we have operating system as a layer of abstraction. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we're going to have, we're going to have some sort of a structure, all right, uh, which is going to be um, basically an abstraction layer for things like F puts, uh, right, and also F put U for printing numbers, uh, right. So fputs takes the Linux file descriptor and writes everything directly. So it just performs the syscall. We need to create something that, uh, that takes instead of file descriptor, a sort of a structure that uh, has a pointer to the buffer into which we're going to be, uh, you know, uh, writing things. So uh, let's actually come up with such structure. How are we going to call it? <clears throat> Size of... Uh, so... Maybe we can we can call it something like buffered, uh, buffered FD, right? So this is a buffered FD. Uh, though it's a very long name, but maybe that's fine, right? Maybe it's going to be buff FD, or maybe buffed FD. Is that a good name? I think it's a good name. So it's a buffed FD. Uh, so what we're going to have in this specific structure, right? So obviously we need to have the FD itself, right? So the file descriptor itself, let's actually capitalize it like this, right? Uh, so, and this is going to be just an integer, right? So we're storing the file descriptor, the original file descriptor. So then we also need to store the pointer to the buffer into which we're writing things, right? The pointer to the buffer. So uh, let's call it maybe just buff, and this is going to be just a pointer. And uh, where that buffer is located, it's going to be... Yeah, we'll have to think about that. I suppose we can allocate like buffer 
uh, in the temporary memory, right? So we have a temporary scratch buffer and we can allocate like 32 kilobytes roughly or something like that and just give the pointer to that buffer in here. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, at the end of the generation, we can just deallocate that temporary memory and close everything. So I guess that's gonna be <clears throat> that's gonna be enough. All right. So and another thing, we need to track how much uh, like you know how much stuff we already put into the buffer, right? And how much stuff we have uh, left in the buffer, right? So let's actually keep track of the capacity of the buffer. Uh, so this is going to be a, uh, an integer, right? So this is the capacity of the buffer. And uh, also we're going to have the size of the buffer, how much stuff we already uh, put there, right? So this is going to be something like this. Uh, cool. So now I suppose so far from this data structure, we need only two operations. We need to be able to print strings into the buffer and we need to be able to print uh, numbers into the buffer, right? So let's go ahead and try to do that. So it's gonna be, um, how can we how can we call that? So there's a f um, puts for f for file descriptor. So maybe I'm going to actually have a, uh, like a set of uh, functions, something like B puts and B put you, right? So, and B stands for buffered. Um, I think it's a good idea. So yeah. Uh, and as a parameter, we accept a pointer in here. And um, first, we also have to probably accept the string. So here is the string. And here is the pointer to this structure. Right, so it's a pointer to the structure. And usually puts and put you function don't return really anything. Uh, right, so I'm just not going to return anything. Uh, so in here, I'm going to just put a to do saying that b puts is not implemented yet. Right, this stuff is not implemented yet. And I also need to drop all of these things in here. There we go. So put you is supposed to take an integer, integer that you want to print and also take the uh, buffered structure. So also in here we're not gonna accept anything so drop drop uh to do uh b put u is not implemented yet there we go mm, is not implemented yet <clears throat> please nerf fd yeah it's too buffed um okay so that's pretty cool um, but now maybe we also need to need a way to construct um, the buffer or maybe we're going to do that manually. It's actually kind of interesting, but we'll see anyway. So here we're trying to open this entire thing. And the next step we need to do is I suppose we need to allocate uh, the buffered AFD somewhere. So let's actually do that in a local memory. So this is going to be a uh, buff fd uh, size of buffed fd so maybe we're gonna call it like that so this is a buffed fd and before starting anything i, th I think it would make sense to uh zero initialize it because uh local memories usually are not automatically zero initialized uh so std let me let me find where we have all of that i think it's somewhere here so it's a mem set uh so size is size of buffed uh, fd then zero and then the pointer itself right so it's above the fd mem set and we're also going to drop this entire thing there we go so we zero initialized everything <clears throat> so now after we open the file descriptor i suppose i need to set that file descriptor to the buffed fd right so this is going to be buffed fd uh, buffed fd fd pointer plus and i'm saving that stuff in there right so i'm taking this field and i'm saving this fd in there so the next thing we also need to do we need to uh pre-allocate the um, the buffer right so uh, we can do that probably somewhere here i can do the following thing tim p alloc um and how much buffer um I want to allocate. So let's say buffed FD capacity, right? So buffed and D initial capacity. And uh, because of that, it's going to be somewhere here. So this is going to be just a buff. And I'm going to set that buff into the uh, buffed FD, buffed FD buff pointer plus, and I'm going to save it in here. There we go. 
Though here's an interesting thing. If we have buff TFD capacity as some sort of a compile time parameter, maybe we don't need buffed FD uh, cap field for now, right? This sort of implies that you can uh, change the capacity of this thing at runtime, but it's not really necessary right now, right? Because of that, maybe I don't even want to do that, right? So let's just have buffed FD as a, uh, you know, compile time parameter. And then later, when it needs to become a runtime parameter, we can just implement that. So uh, how much do we need? I think like, as I already said, 32 kilobytes should be enough for everyone. So uh, let's just do something like this. And there we go, 32 kilobytes. Mm, all right, that's pretty cool. Um, now, buffed uh, FD, cool. Uh, after that, after that, we have to be a little bit careful. So where do we close the entire thing? So we close FD in here. And uh, on top of that, I probably want to uh, rewind the temporary buffer to uh, where we have the, the entire thing, right? So basically that way I deallocate all of the memory that we allocated in there, uh, right? Hopefully. Mm -mm -mm. So yeah, that's fine. So that's how we're gonna do that. It's not the perfect interface for buffered IO, but it's a, like a first iteration of the interface for buffered IO. Obviously, maybe in the future, we're gonna have like, um, I don't know, um, maybe some sort of a constructor, right? Some sort of, sort of constructor where you pass FD and it will just pre-allocate everything for you or something like that. But this should be enough for, for now, at least. This should be enough for now. Uh, okay, so let me, I, I didn't really want to clone anything in here. Uh, let me go and just recompile everything. So this is going to be port the port. Okay, so it doesn't compile, let's see why. Uh, so it wants a pointer. Uh, okay, so that means I have to save it as a pointer, not as an integer. Mm -hmm. Okay, compilation took one second and everything seems to be fine, more or less, hopefully. All right, so now what we have to do, we have to go through all of the uh, mentions of FD and replace them with, I would say, um, buffed FD be puts, right? So essentially what I have to do now is um, maybe even select, maybe even select this entire thing. So uh, let's find this thing and query replace FD of puts with buffed FD be puts. Uh, maybe it's not going to actually take into account F put U, so I have to do that slightly differently. So query replace FD F put with buffed FD uh, B put, right? So, and this is how we're going to do all of that. Hopefully that will work out. So I'm going to do that one by one just to make sure that I don't miss anything. Uh, right, so there's a lot of things in here, but since like I'm using Emacs features, Ooh, this one is interesting. So put description str. So yeah, yeah, so we have a code that takes a string and turns it into a sequence of like decimal numbers and whatnot, uh, which means that we'll need to implement this be, uh, put u description as well. Uh, right, so we have to do it like that. Uh -huh. So, but I mean, the compiler will tell us that we're doing something wrong. Uh, now, so, and I also call to some external functions here as well, as you can see, like FD, uh, which probably means that I want to, the compilation fail in all of the places where I use FD. So I'm going to put uh, FD underscore, right? So the compiler actually fails there. So I can go through all of these places and make modifications. <clears throat> and make modifications. Um... <clears throat> Are all size of uh, defined uh, by constants then? Yes, the, all of the size of things are by constants because uh, there's no like a special characters in the language. Any uh, sequence of characters is just like, can be used as a name, right? You can literally use them as a name because we tokenize the language by basically spaces, right? So that's why you can use a parenthesis in the name of words, right? It's a, it's a valid name, uh, why not? So the only special treatment for like special characters are probably quotes for strings and single quotes for characters. Apart from that, there is nothing, maybe also comments. So you can use dashes in the names, you can use whatever you want, right? Uh, hash signs and stuff like that. If that's what you into, 
Will there ever be enums? Uh, why? Uh, here are enums. This is how we do them. You implement enums the same way you do them in Go, right? So they are just constant, and there is some sort of like a generator of, of values, and that's how you generate enums. You don't need support for enums. You can just use constants. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's actually go through the compilation errors and see how it fails, right? So we don't uh, have FD. Uh, let's put it like that. So maybe I'm gonna actually put it like this because of the places place it goes to. So I can easily just add this thing in here. Uh, all right, the next one. Uh, generate print intel. Okay, so in here I want to use buffed FD instead of a regular FD, right? Uh, so now uh, let's let's go to the next one. So this is also going to be buffed FD. Uh -huh. mm, and this one we don't have B put description. Okay, so let me find F put uh, desk str right. Uh, F put str. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. B put uh, deck str, and in here, what do we accept? We accept this entire thing, um, right? And also, we have to accept a pointer, right? Uh, and in here, I suppose I'm gonna just like do something like drop, 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 and say to do uh, B put deck str is not implemented yet. Uh, implemented yet. There we go, there we go. Cool. Now let's recompile that. Unknown FD, so I want to use underscore FD in here, and that should be fine, more or less, uh, except generate print Intel uh, Linux x86 64. Now should accept uh, buffed FD, right? So here we accept buffed FD, so this one has to be a, po a pointer. Uh, and in here, this one is going to be buffed FD. So basically what I'm doing right now, I'm doing doing compiler assisted uh, refactoring, right? I'm following the compilation errors and I'm replacing, uh, you know, the, the code, right? So that's basically what I do. So unknown word and here I have to do buffed FD. Uh, buffed FD. Uh, buffed FD. And here I have to replace F with B. Could have just like used a better way of replacing, but who cares? All right. B puts. Okay, so B puts is not visible at this point because it's uh, defined down there. Right. It is defined down there, so that means I want to sort of like hoist the definition of the buffered structure uh, a little bit higher. I'm, I think I'm gonna hoist it right into. Yeah, where we have a code generator, right? So for the code generator, here it is. So right now, for now, I'm gonna keep um, like all of that in the uh, code of the compiler. But then later, when this thing becomes more useful for other parts of the for other programs, I will extract that into um, you know standard library at some point. So uh, puts. Uh, let me find puts proc b puts. Here it is. Mm -hmm. So begin code generation of our nation. There we go. There we go. And let's recompile this stuff. Okay. So what do we have? Uh, oh, all right. All right. Uh, so buffed of D. So expected in, but got point. Huh? Ah, I see. So th this is a new one. All right. So this one has to be a pointer. Uh, out of D. Maybe buffed of D. Right, and let me just rename this to buffed FD. So and maybe the thing I'm gonna do is end, uh, and then query replace FD, F put with, this is not what I wanted, honestly. Uh, okay, uh, and query, query replace FD, F put with buffed FD, uh, B put. All right, and let's go through all of these things. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so that should be fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So as you can see, we have a lot of, like, small uh, writes, right? And if you call uh, 
writes his call for very small strings a lot of times, this is very, very slow because every time you need to print like a couple of characters, you switch in the context, you switch in the context from the user space to the kernel space. And that is very expensive. So that's why people came up with such thing as buffered input uh, output, right? So first you collect what you want to send to the operating system and only then uh, you uh, perform the write to reduce the amount of like uh, write calls. So that's essentially what we're trying to do in here. Right. Okay. So we're just generating assembly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it makes sense to like manually go through all of that, but it's not that much of a code. So I'm going to just do that because why not? It's always nice to like go through the code and make sure that you like understand what's going on. Right. So because like a query replacing everything blindly is kind of dangerous, right? Because you may notice some uh, thing that you didn't want to, and maybe you can like put some sort of crippling bug. So we're almost done. Yeah, that's it. So that should be it. Let's try to recompile that one more time. Uh, unknown word FD. Perfect. So uh, generate OP. Ah, okay. So that's actually good. So we're generating OP comment. Okay. And generate OP comment is supposed to uh, accept uh, pointer in here as well. So this one is going to be uh, buffed FD. And this is a very small function, so I can just like go ahead and do that. Oh, lock. So we also need something like B put lock, right? Because lock is a location, right? So it's a file path plus row plus column. Uh, right. So we'll need to be able to have uh, like buffered printers for a lot of different types for strings for numbers for locations and for decimal strings not that many but we'll still have to have them yeah uh, we'll still have to have them well in any case we can always copy paste this kind of stuff uh be put lock okay so let's go here and say that we're going to implement that at some point uh so this thing is going to accept the location, which is a pointer, and then the buffered thing. And in here, we're going to just drop it twice and say to do uh, b put lock is not implemented yet. All right, it is not implemented yet. Next one. All right. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it compiled. That's actually pretty cool. It compiled. But you know what's, uh, what's funny is that it's not going to be able to recompile itself. Right, because as soon as you try to regenerate yourself, it will say bputs is not implemented, right? So basically you crippled your compiler. Uh, your compile uh, is capable of generating intermediate representation, type checking, but it's incapable of generating anything because these functions are not implemented yet, right? So the, the beauty of self-hosted compiler. So what I usually do, I have a copy of, uh, you know, previous version of the compiler in a bootstrap, right? And I'm compiling with previous version, right? I compile in the next version of the compiler. Uh, right, and after that, I can within the compiler I can say run the new version of the compiler, and then while I'm running the new version of the compiler, I'm recompiling it again. So that way, I if I even if I break something, uh, it's not going to be anything critical, right? So as you can see, here we go. So this this was the first compilation, and this was the second compilation. And the second compilation, it complained about this thing not implemented. So yeah, basically. <clears throat> basically, basically, basically. So how are we going to be implementing all of that? Uh, so I suppose uh, what we need to do, right? We need to first check if we fit into the into the like buffer or something like that. So I'm just looking to the chat, hoping that maybe there are some questions, some interesting questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got some subs uh, from Steven Server. Thank you so much for uh, tier one sub for gifting tier one sub tier one sub to Binar. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really, really appreciate that. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, 
So, cool. Mm -hmm. So this is the string. So maybe the first thing I want to do, I want to actually bind everything. So this is the string that we're trying to print. And this is basically buffed FD. Maybe I should call it BFD. So it's a buffered FD. Uh, I think it makes a little bit more sense. Um, okay. So, and the first thing we want to do, the first thing we want to do, if... Mm, so we can take BFD and we can take the size of the buffer, right? So this is the size of the buffer plus, uh, and then we're reading it as an integer. So there we go. Um, maybe, mm, do I want to bind it to anything? Do I want to bind it to anything? Is it that important? I think it's, it's going to be important in the near future. So I'm going to assign it to size. Um, right. So this is basically the size. Mm -hmm. Do we need anything else? Uh, maybe we could have uh, the buffer as well, right? So this is going to be the buffer. Mm, and this is where we're going to have all of that. So but the buffer has to be read as a pointer. So we have a size and we have the buffer. Size and the buffer. Mm -hmm. So there's two things. If size n plus, right, is greater than the capacity, so it's going to be buffed, FD capacity and it is greater than the capacity. We first probably want to flush the entire buffer, right? We want to flush it, uh, right? So the way we're going to flush it, we're going to just print everything that is within the buffer. Um, that within the buffer and uh, only then try to put something there. Only then try to put something there. Mm hmm. But that will require, that may modify the thing, right? So that may effectively modify that and I'm not really happy about it, but that's fine. Uh, okay, so we'll have to like read it one more time. Mm. So let's call it B flash, right? So then I can do BFD and just like flash the entire thing. So, and because of that, we'll have to do uh, B flash and uh, we're going to accept the pointer and that is basically it, right? So here we're going to say that to do B flash is not implemented yet. Implemented yet, right? B flash is not implemented yet. Uh, cool. Mm -hmm. So if this situation occurred, uh, what we want to do, we just want to flash. So because of that, I didn't think buffer is needed. So I can just like do something like this, right? I can do something like this. And furthermore, I use size only once. So maybe it doesn't really matter if I just do it like that, right? So I'm just basically grabbing the size, uh, right? I'm grabbing the size. I'm adding uh, the, um, the N and if it becomes greater than, the capacity, I just first flush the entire thing, right? I just flush it. Cool. Mm, though, interestingly enough, maybe I can maintain the pointer to this size uh, because that's something that I want to be using quite often when I'm referring to things, right? So here I can do B, uh, P size, <laughs> P, P size. Uh, right, and then here is going to be P size, and if it's that, all right. And after that, uh, I can just try to check this stuff yet again. All right, I'm trying to check it yet again. If the string that you're generally trying to print is bigger than the buffer at all, and instead of using B puts, we should probably use F puts right away. So if you're trying to print something that by the definition itself is bigger than the buffer that we have, let's not just add anything to that buffer. Let's just like, you know, uh, print it right away. So why not? So here we try to uh, just flush it. And if flush didn't work, right? The flush didn't work. Um, let's just like do F puts. Um, so how are we going to do that? Uh, N, S, uh, then we'll have to take FD, I suppose. So maybe I'm gonna do it like that. B, FD, buffered, buffed FD, uh, FD, point plus. So this one is a pointer to FD. Uh, I take this thing, I read it like that, and I just do F puts, right? So there we go. Otherwise, if we still have some space, right? If we do have some space, um, 
All right, if we do have some space, we probably want to just append this entire thing into the buffer. So we've got a sub I see. Uh, thank you so much, Rough TLW, for tier one sub, your first subscription, by the way, and welcome to our Epic Port Club. How about that? How about that? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -mm. Alrighty, alrighty. So cool. Mm -mm. And the reason why I'm keeping pointers to these things is because B flash may update P size. That's why. You see, uh, P size uh, one uh, is one thing right now, but after the flash, it should become zero. So on the next uh, sort of iteration here, not on the next line, uh, this thing will be completely different. It should be zero. So that's why I keep like a pointer to that. Uh, that's why I keep a pointer to that. Um, but maybe. Maybe you can just assume that P size must be zero after B flash, but this is sort of like invariant that I'm depend on, and that means I need to assert that invariant anyway. So why not just include like merge assertion and actual check together? Uh, so I don't think, yeah, I think it's fine. So we have another uh, sub close 76. Thank you so much for uh, seven months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate the support. Uh, alrighty. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, and if this entire thing fits there, right? If this entire thing fits there, what we or what we want to do is just append everything there, right? So we need buffer. All uh, right, I'm gonna do bfd uh, buffed fd buff pointer plus. So this becomes more of like a b. Uh, p buff, right? So this is a p buff. P size, p bfd, p buff. Uh, but in case of, in case of buff, I'm not sure if I really want to like refer it by pointer because it's just like, yeah, I just want it to be this stuff. Uh, all right, so here's the pointer. Then I need to take the p size. All right, I'm taking the p size and I'm offsetting the buffer to here, and this is where I need to start writing things. So I'm going to be using memcopy, uh, so std, so it should be somewhere here. So we already have memset, and where is memcopy? Here is memcopy. So first has to be the size, uh, right? So that means I need to take the size of the string, and the size of the string is s. This is the beginning of the buffer, right? So this is the beginning of the buffer. And then we'll have to provide the destination. And destination is actually here. And there we go. That's what I need to do. Uh, mem copy. Cool. So, and it should return the destination, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it does return destination. We don't care about destination, so I'm going to drop that. So after that, I need to increment size by the size of the string. So I think we have something like inc64 by, uh, I think it's in core, yeah, inc64 by, yeah, I can provide the pointer, uh, I can provide the pointer, so this is the pointer, and then the size, uh, and then I can say inc64 by, and I'm incrementing that pointer by, um, by that. Right, so I just take the value inside of that pointer and increment it by n. So that should be it, if I understand correctly. So maybe some of this stuff can be simplified, maybe, but that should be fine. What's funny is that we have to do a similar thing for all of these things, though for b put u, we can just convert the number into a string and simply use b puts to print that string and all of the checks for overflow are going to be applied automatically in fact all of the rest of the operations can be implemented in terms of b puts so i don't think we will have to implement this buffering logic multiple times right i don't think so right so we'll just need to get it right one time and then just chill right and also then we'll have to implement b flash but implementing b flash is actually super easy uh, i think i can probably implement it right now so what we need to do is just like all of these things oh by the way pfd do i really need to take it by a pointer if you think about that right fd is probably not going to be changing so uh yeah i think the size is the only thing that needs to be passed by a pointer here so that's actually very interesting so uh pfd right so i i don't need this this kind of stuff yeah huh it's kind of cool that i can destructurize the structure 
and sort of like decide which of the fields of the structure I refer by a reference and which of them I refer by a value. That is actually pretty cool, right? And I didn't even need any special syntax for that, right? <laughs> So it's kind of cool that you like, like discover, keep discovering patterns with these slide bindings and stuff like that. It's actually very cool. I really like that. Hmm. Lead bindings are amazing, right? I absolutely love lead bindings. This is not a fourth like language anymore. I do understand that lead bindings transformed Porth completely. It's a completely different language now. But who said it's a bad thing? I think it's a good thing. We might have actually like discovered a completely new language. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's not completely new, but we definitely discovered a very cool language because I've never seen this style of programming before. And I'm, I tried a lot of languages before and I've never seen anything like that, which is very, very cool. Though, granted, I didn't mess with concatenative languages too much, right? But I don't know. So the dark bug, uh, thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to Epic Port Club. So I wouldn't say that this is a unique or novel approach, but it's a pretty cool approach that I discovered myself and that's pretty cool. So that's what I'm saying. So maybe somebody uh, also, maybe in languages like Factor, you have a similar thing. So maybe somebody could tell me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Do -do -do -do. Porth is not like Forth, but written in Porth. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway. So uh, what do we got? So this is a B flash. And if I want to flush things, right? If I want to flush things, I suppose I only need the pointer to the size, right? So I need the pointer to the size and the file descriptor. So here I will have P size, FD. Uh, and probably the buffer, right? So I kind of need like a similar destructuring in here. Um, I kind of need a similar destructuring. <clears throat> so, yeah. Okay. Uh huh. So I'll just use so the size this and the buffer, uh, I provide size, int, the buffer, and file descriptor, and I just print that. And then I need to set 0 to p size, right? So this is going to be something like this. There we go. So this is a point, fd buffer, then I use the size and the buffer, and then I print it into the file, and then uh, I set size to 0. Okay, that's very cool. It's very cool, and that should also go away, right? So, and I think the core of the buffered I.O. is implemented. So this is sort of like the core of it, right? So, and everything is going to be implemented around this logic, hopefully. Uh, let me recompile it one more time. So unknown word BFD. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I do understand that. So maybe because of that, we want to do BFD. Uh -huh. Sometimes I'm super lazy. Can I just do something like dupe and then swap and then <laughs> dupe <laughs> and then swap? Uh, and then here I can just consume the last thing. So that way, as you can see, I'm just threading the pointer through the sequence of these getters or something like that. And uh, that should compile. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes I'm just too lazy to write any LED bindings. So I just use the original fourth style of de development. So in fourth, you're supposed to program in this style, right? This is how you would do this kind of stuff in fourth. Right, so this is the fourth way of doing things, and the fourth way of doing things would be to create a binding like this, right? So, yeah, as you can see, I do understand both of the styles, kind of, kind of. Maybe, maybe in in fourth there is a better way to do that. But right now I'm just like I don't want to do it this way. I just want to do dupe, swap, dupe, swap, and here I just consume the last thing, and I can even do something like that, I suppose. Uh, yeah. yeah, so you have two styles in here. Cool. All right, bput is not implemented yet. 
so um all right mm -mm. I wonder if it would be possible to create LED bindings as soon as PROC starts. Uh, are you suggesting what a lot of people have suggested multiple times, basically merge LED and a PROC together? So you could do something like uh, N, um, S, BFD and never actually have something like that. Is that what you're suggesting? Uh, I already said that I don't want to do that, actually, uh, because the current style kind of allows you partial application by default, if that makes any sense. Right, for instance, uh, if you want to implement, uh, it could be maybe useful, I don't know, but uh, if you want to implement function add that takes two integer and produces one integer, how can you implement that function? Right now, you can just put plus in here and you're done. You're just done. And if by default it would it would require you to have something like this, well, you would have to put those things first into the into this thing, and there we go. So it's kind of cool that you have this partial Haskell style application, right? So because this is how you do things in Haskell, right? I kind of like that that some of the things can be just implemented like partially applied. And in fact, you can see this kind of stuff quite often in uh, in Linux syscalls, right? So um, Right, so there we go. So I'm using partial application. So obviously the feature has to be sort of opt in, right? If you wanna buy the things, you have to opt in into binding them. And guess what? Let bindings is basically that, right? By default, uh, you have this, uh, you know, uh, partial application style, but if you wanna opt in, that's the way to opt in. That's, yeah, there you go. You wanna opt in, you just put an extra syntax. Right, that's the way to opt in. So everything works as intended, and I like don't see any problems with that actually. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> and everything else is just like making it less syntactically noisy, which is already bike shedding. Right. So I don't know. Don't worry, don't really want to go into that. Um. <clears throat> mm -mm. Okay, you're welcome. So, but again, the syntax of the language is not finalized, right? So maybe something will change in the future. And definitely when I'm done with the semantic of the language, when I'm happy more or less with the current semantic of the language, I will just do a, like a full review uh, of the like of the syntax, right? Based on the final semantic of the language, right? Because I don't even know where we're going to end up semantically with this language. And the syntax is going to be like heavily dependent on that. So first let's get the semantic right and then I will just go back and uh, reimagine the syntax again with the final semantic of the language right so the syntax doesn't really matter that much right it's it, it really doesn't okay <clears throat> so all right so now it complains about b put u right it complains about b put u and I think in the standard library we had a function that takes an integer and converts it into a string and puts it into the temporary buffer I don't remember how it is called uh, but it was something like tmp uh, u to yeah, I think that's what it was yes convert unsigned integer to string stored in a temporary buffer and that's probably something that we want to use there we go uh, that's probably something that we want to use so in here I'm gonna have fd b not fd but uh, x bfd right uh, and what I want to do is probably Mm, put tmp end in here and then at the end of this entire thing I'm gonna also rewind the entire thing right whatever temporary stuff I allocate inside of this function I will rewind back uh, then I take x and this is what I've got all right I've got a string which I then can print into into bfd so that would be something like this I think yeah, that's pretty cool. And then that should be it actually, believe it or not. So this converts the number into the string 
and puts it into a temporary buffer, meaning that it allocates something. And then we just print the string. And if the string like overflows the buffer or anything like that, all of that logic is handled by uh, B puts. And after that, we just deallocate everything that was allocated by uh, TMP U2S. This is a very, very bad name. I don't like this name, but uh, we're gonna change that in the future, right? So that should be fine. Uh, let's try to recompile that one more time. Okay. TMP U2S, and uh, what do you want from me? So it's supposed to. Ah. Expected int, but got pointer. Ah. Wait. Wait, what? Ah! Okay, I see. So it probably has to be done somewhere here. All right. Um, <laughs> sorry. All right, I'm getting really derpy right now. Maybe I'm already tired. Uh, yeah, I think I'm already getting tired. So I need some tea. Okay, B put lock is not implemented. Perfect. B put lock. What's going to be the easiest way to implement B put lock? Mm -mm. Let me see. Mm, let lock BFD. Uh, maybe I can just do uh, F put lock. All right, I'm going to get F put lock. Mm, proc f put lock and for now i'm gonna just copy paste this thing right <laughs> i'm just gonna copy paste it and i'm gonna essentially replace it with bfd bfd b so that should be it cool uh-huh Yusu, 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 kawaii freaking this. B put desk. Uh, okay, so we can do a similar thing. Um, proc f put f put deck. Yeah, here it is. Oh shit, that's a lot of stuff. That's a very old function. Look at that. Yeah, so you have file descriptor, then you have a string, and to bind them to a name, I allocate local memory, move them to local memory, some logic like that. Yeah, this is a very old, this is like before bindings. So this is how I had to write in Porth before I had bindings. So it's an old piece of code. And of course, it, like the code base of Porth is rather big. It's like 5,000 lines of code. Right, so I cannot uh, rewrite everything at once. I just like rewrite it as I go. Uh, right, and that's why I maintain both of the styles. So, and we have an opportunity to refactor, slightly refactor this piece of code. And that's actually a very cool opportunity. Uh, okay, so let's go in here. So this thing is not implemented yet. So, and uh, yeah, obviously we don't want to do this kind of stuff. Um, so first, I'm not sure what that's about, but I'm going to keep this thing for now because it's some sort of like a logic hack, apparently. Uh, so this is N and S, and uh, we have BFD, right? So this is what we're going to do in here. BFD uh, 9, cool. So STR, we don't really need to do that kind of stuff. So we can just say N, ooh, ooh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, essentially what we do in here is just like N, S, and in here, I probably want to pick into the size so I can do something like over while the size of the string is greater than zero and this thing is not first, right? If this thing is not, uh, if if at first it just false, otherwise we do that. And this is where we want to do BFD uh, B puts, right? So that's what we're doing here. Uh, and then in here, we take the data of the string, which is S, we read the character, then we do BFD, and we do B put. And then we reduce the size of the character by one, so that here we'll have to just do let and S. Uh, all right. So in here we reduce it by one, which means that we have to do N minus one and S point plus. So that's how I would rewrite this code today. Right, so that's how we would do that. Though, interestingly enough, I don't use neither N or S in here, right? And here S is actually at the top of the stack, 
which means that I can move this entire light binding in here, and instead of using S, I can use dupe, right? Which greatly simplifies the entire code, right? Because we don't really need any of this stuff while doing this kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so uh, combining both of the styles, fourth style and fourth style is actually rather beneficial. Um, right, and at the end of this entire loop, we're gonna have an empty string, uh, which we probably wanna drop. There we go. So this is a fourth style of dropping things, but you can go fourth style. So if you want to drop uh, two elements, you can do it like that. So it's actually kind of cool, right? Uh, if you want to drop, let's say, five elements from the stack, this is how we do that in fourth. In fourth, you'll have to do something like this, right? Which at some point becomes shorter. Right, but in case of two elements, I think, I think fourth style is shorter. So you you have an opportunity to actually choose. Um, right. So here we can do that. Hmm, it's very cool. Although that makes sense, I think. Does it? Does it make sense? I think it does make sense. Anyways, uh, fourth golf, yes, golf, golf. What is that? <laughs> Uh, all right, I think, yeah, this is the new style of, uh, of programming these things. This is a new wave of programming. Uh, and I'm not particularly sure what would be the best way to do all of that. So can we somehow get rid of the first? We can certainly... Ha! Huh. We can certainly put true in here put true in here, then in here we can just pick into the first like so, all right, we're picking into the first and what's interesting is that we don't really need uh, this branch anymore because here we can just put always false. There's something very interesting about that. And that also allows us to kind of merge these two branches now. What if I just do uh, first, uh, like so. And you don't need local memory anymore. Right, so first true. Uh, if not first, you just do that. Otherwise, yeah. That could be cool. Hmm. This is a very interesting style of programming because it's kind of immutable in a sense. Right, because all of these bindings are immutable within this block. But then at the end of this block, you provide the new values of this uh, of these variables and in the next iteration you work on the new one it's kind of immutable in some sense it feels immutable but it's actually not what this is so interesting okay all right so uh i should stop actually red holding about this thing okay so this one doesn't even work uh, and this is by the way because i forgot to drop uh, the last thing in here. So now I have to do it like three times. But again, maybe doing it like that is going to be sure. No. So I think it starts to pay off when you need to drop four of them. Yeah, yeah. So when you need to draw four of them, you actually save one character. <laughs> uh, why am I obsessing over that? I don't know. It's kind of dumb, but it's, it's kind of fun at the same time. <laughs> uh, yes, that's beautiful. Mm -mm. So, okay, let me see. Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work now? You! Okay, so it generated garbage. That is very cool. <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, so it says fourth uh, invalid operand. Okay, so, and how much did we generate even? Uh, I, I think we generated a lot. So I presume this was all generate. okay. Huh. I'm 
kind of like, oh, I know what's going on. Chat, chat, I know what's going on. Who can tell what just happened? Who can tell me what just happened? Come on. Who can tell me? One. I'm counting up to not flash exactly. More uni younger, you were first. We didn't flash at the end. Yes, we didn't flash at the very, very end before closing the file. Yes, so that's what we forgot to do. Cool, that's very, very cool. Uh, let me go to FD close. Right, there we go. And right before closing everything, uh, what we need to do, we need to just, just flash it, right? So it's gonna be buffed FD, B flash, right? And we should be good to go, hopefully. Uh -huh. All right. So let me let me see, and it still didn't work. What the fuck? Uh, what the fuck? Uh, that's very strange. Uh, generation took. It's already faster, but uh, I'm not sure. What the fuck? Uh, another place. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We close this, man. I'm not sure. Okay, let me, let me remove this everything. So did I forget to... Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do that one more time. Mm. Hmm. All right, so let's go to 10.99. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so it's not about that actually. All right, so something... Oh, shit. It could be that... Fuck. Am I printing something to the standard output, actually? Instead of, like... Am I printing something somewhere else? And I wish... Oh, I know what's going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know what's going on. It's a bug that we encountered in Put You. Uh, I, I know exactly. So it's a, it's an old bug that I copy paste. Yeah, I know what it is. So here is the conversion from a string, from a number to a string. And there is a corresponding function that prints this thing directly. Right. They kind of have a similar loops, right? They kind of have a similar loops, but they're actually different. So I can even copy paste their loops. Uh, so this is the um, the buggy one, and this is not the buggy one. What's the difference between them? What's the difference between them? The difference is these two things, right? And this is because we are printing unsigned integer, but the comparison is signed. So if the unsigned one is too big, it may be interpret it as um, a negative one and the entire loop will stop and it will not print anything. So this is like an old function that I just copy pasted that, but then I forgot to update it. Right, that's why copy paste is bad kids. That's why, because you can accidentally leave bugs like that and your professor, your CS professor is gonna be very, very angry. And, it's not gonna, and he's not gonna give you good grades. All right, so we actually did that. So, yeah. So I wonder if the compiler can recompile itself now. So if, if I try to recompile itself, is it, gonna, is it gonna be able to do that? And it was able to do that, right? It was actually able to do that. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and now let's compare the performance of the generation without buffering and with buffering. Okay. So let me do that. Uh, generation took two seconds without buffering. And generation took 0, 4, 6 with buffering. That's why the input output in the standard uh, uh, C library is buffered. This is precisely why. Literally, precisely why. Isn't that cool? <laughs> uh, so yeah, we cut it in how much? I don't know. Uh, my brain doesn't work. 
Uh, uh, wrong, yeah, so you're just using the wrong data structure. I wonder if we like increase the size of the uh, of the buffer, right? So, um, what was the buffer? I forgot. What was the constant? Uh, it's a buff of the capacity. What about 64? Uh, 64 kilobytes. Is it going to improve anything? Uh, 4.5. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, all right. So, uh, I didn't think it improved that much. Oh, no, 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 wait a second. Yeah, I didn't think it improved that much. So, uh, right. So, this is a 32 kilobytes and have 64 kilobytes. Uh, so, generation of our nation. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't think it actually improves that much. Right, so there's some diminishing returns at some point. Uh, I don't remember, like, what's the size of the buffer in GNU libc, but the last time I checked, I think it was 32 kilobytes, roughly. I think it was roughly 32 kilobytes, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah. So we're gonna probably keep 32 kilobytes. There's no need to actually go bigger than 32, I think. Mm hmm. 16 kilobytes? Ah, no, whatever. Um, okay, so let me uh, let me see if we didn't break any tests. So that's quite important, right? So let's do the full testing and see uh, if it doesn't break anything. Not the buffer size, really? Wait a second. Oh shit, I'm an idiot. Oh, fuck. Huh. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's, let's keep 64, whatever. <laughs> uh, let's keep 64. Why not? Yeah, it just can, can be changed. <clears throat> I think I'm already getting tired. So even though I streamed for like one hour, right, I'm already getting tired. Um, do, 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 do. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Cool. Uh, so now, though, one thing I would like to do before I commit everything, I want to rename that horrible name. Uh, right, query replace uh, buffed FD with BFD. Right. So, uh, yeah. So let's actually do it like that. Yeah. Ah, uh, shit. Okay. Uh, there's some changes I don't understand. Okay, just a second. Uh, Emacs is like whining about some changes or whatnot. Uh, revert the buffer. Everything's fine. Okay, query replace now. Uh, FD with BFD. Thank you. Uh, and also, let me find underscore FD. Um, Right, where is underscore FD? And let me actually rename it back. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is another one, another one, another one. I think this is the last one. Cool. Uh, and uh, just in case, one more time, more test. Um, so. Mm -mm -mm -mm. What do you buffer reads or writes? I'm buffering writes because that's uh, what we're doing right now. We're improving the generation. Okay, so everything seems to be fine. Uh, let me do the following thing. Mm -hmm. Make the assembly file generation buffered. There we go. And uh, on top of that, I'm going to also do update bootstrap. Right, so that will replace the current bootstrap file. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Date bootstrap. And I'm gonna push that right into the repo. 
right into the Reaper. Mm -mm -mm. Cool. So I guess uh, we're done with buffered output and we actually managed to speed up the generation phase of the compiler. How about that? <laughs> 